Now let us talk about monopoly mark, learner's index. So what do you mean by this? So a firm that is facing a downward sloping market demand curve or, or, or a demand curve that has a market bar, right? So if you compare it with a perfectly competitive firm, it faces a horizontal demand curve. So at that particular price, it wants to sell whatever it wants to sell, it can sell, right? So it doesn't have any power to influence price. So unlike that, monopoly has the power to influence the price. So firm, please write. A firm that faces a downward sloping demand curve as a market power. as a market power, the ability to choose the price above the cost. Above margin cost, right? So, there are two kinds of markets. So one of the market is in which the consumers are very, very price sensitive. And in the another market, the consumers are less price sensitive. So in which the consumers are very, very price sensitive, it means that the monopolist is facing a very elastic demand curve. While in case if uh, the demand curve is, is, uh, is relatively, uh, what do you call, steeper, right? So in that particular case, you can say, that uh, monopolist is facing an inelastic demand curve, right? So just have this thing. So there are two kinds of markets out here. So one is your uh, one is your where consumers they can be either very price sensitive. or they can be very price insensitive. Right. They can be very price sensitive or very price insensitive. So the market in which the consumers are very price sensitive. So in those markets, what happen is that, uh, that the, the demand curve which the monopolist is facing is highly elastic or relatively flat. So highly elastic demand curve or relatively flat or relatively flat, right? So it's close to you can say modulus of E equals to zero. Sorry, modulus of E equals to infinity. I'm so sorry. Yeah. Or very price insensitive. So in which uh, the consumers are, uh, I mean, consumers will be buying this product. So whatever be the price, right? So in which, uh, so it is highly inelastic demand. right? Or the curve is relatively steep, steep. Right? Close to modulus of E equals to zero. Right? We'll be talking about this. So let me just uh, derive this uh, 
this guy for you, learner's index. So how do you write this? You write this way. So you have the proper function, which is dy minus c is a function of y. So price is the function of the output into output minus cost as the function of the output. So this guy is going to maximize uh, with respect to y. It's going to maximize this profit with respect to y. So it is pi dash y. First function as it is into derivative of second plus second function as it is. Sorry, 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 sorry. First function as it is into derivative of second is one with respect to y plus second function as it is into derivative of first, which is p dash y minus c dash y equals to zero minus c dash y equals to zero. So I can write like that. So can I take just py common and I'll have one plus y upon p as a function of y into p dash y equals to c dash y equals to c dash y. Now can I also write it like this? py one plus y upon p and I can write this as dp by dy. This is nothing but your c dash. This is nothing but your c dash. I can write like this. So this is nothing but the inverse of elasticity. I have been telling this since the last recording also. So your elasticity is what? dy by dp into p by y, dq by dp into p by q. So this is this is the reverse of this. So it is dy one plus one upon elasticity. MCO y, right? The spin's elasticity is naturally negative. demand is naturally negative. Right. So I can write this as like this also. Py one minus one upon modulus of elasticity equals to mcy. I can write like this. I can do that. Achha, can I write it like this? P is a function of y minus P is a function of y into one upon modulus of elasticity, mcy. I can write like this. Okay. I can write py minus mcy equals to py into one upon modulus of elasticity. I can write like this. So I can write py minus mcy upon py is equal to one upon modulus of elasticity is equal to one upon modulus of elasticity. This is what my learner's index is. This is what my learner's index is, right? So learner's index. Hmm. What is the LHS measuring? The, the percentage amount uh, which the monopolist can charge above the marginal cost. What is the LHS measuring, right? The, it is measuring the markup. Percentage amount 
rise above the margin cost right and what is the rhs measuring that markup is inversely related to the elasticity of it hai na markup is inversely related to elasticity of demand right so learners index they are measuring what learners index is measuring the market power the firms who have the market market power means i mean you have the power to set the price above the cost right so they will have the power to charge the price above the cost so learners index measures market power right as firms with more power are also able to charge price above the marginal cost price above the marginal cost right now you tell me one thing when you have the elastic demand when you have perfectly elastic demand right then in that case what happens your p minus mc upon upon uh, p right p minus mc upon p is going to be what 1 upon modulus of infinity in this case that means it is equal to 0 that means the monopolist firm will also start behaving as if it is a perfectly competitive firm and it cannot charge much above the Marginal cost, right? Well, if it is equal to zero, in this case, that is infinity. So markup is infinitely high. So P minus M C is equal to infinity. So I can charge a very very high markup. Markup is. infinitely high right markup is infinitely high the other thing which you can also look at it in this way is this that this is also going to confirm that the monopolist is not going to operate at uh, at uh, the inelastic portion of the demand curve so learners index also confirms that monopolist will never want to operate at any elastic portion of the mark at an elastic portion of the mark so it means what supposedly just have a look at this beta just have a look at this so if modulus of e is less than 1 right then it means 1 upon modulus of e is greater than 1 then this would mean according to learners index this would mean p minus mc upon p is greater than 1 is greater than 1 so this would mean p minus mc is going to be greater than p now which can be only true if mc is negative this is this can be only true when mc is negative which is not possible why will marginal cost be negative which can
be only true if MC is negative. Right, if MC is negative, but MC can't be negative. But MC can't be negative, one thing. Achha, you go back to this thing again. Your uh, Supposedly, if the monopolist is going to set the price just 10% above the marginal cost, then what is going to be the elasticity of demand, right? Okay, let me just write it here. So uh, let's say um, my question is, What is the elasticity of demand when monopolis is going to set just 10% above the marginal cost? Or when he's going to set 100% above the marginal cost, right? So just think about it. In this case, what happens? Your price is 1.1 of MC. I mean, just 10% above the marginal cost. So the markup is going to be what? T minus MC upon P that is equal to, in place of P, I can write 1.1 MC minus MC upon 1.1 MC. So that thing comes out to be 0 0.1 upon 1.1. Right, this is equal to one upon modulus of elasticity. One upon modulus of elasticity. So modulus of elasticity. So in this case, modulus of E will come out to be 11. Right. Now, supposedly, if the monopolist is going to charge 100% above the marginal cost, right, if the monopolist is going to charge 100% above the marginal cost, so if MC is, uh, so the price would be double the MC, that is what 100% above the marginal cost would mean. So P minus MC upon P will look like what? 2MC minus MC upon 2MC. That has to be equal to 1 upon modulus of elasticity. So this is what? 1MC upon 2MC, that is 1 upon 2, is equal to 1 upon modulus of elasticity. So modulus of elasticity is equal to 2. So what can you what can you say between these? The markup is higher when elasticity is lower. That is what you want to say here. That's what an example this example is trying to tell you, right? So when markup is higher, Elasticity is lower. So when the monopolist is facing less elastic demand, it can charge a higher price. So here, I mean, the, the elasticity of demand relative to two is, is way more, right? So it cannot charge much higher markup over the cost, but here it can, right? So this is what I wanted to do in this recording. Thank you, Vita.